year on holiday in St. Croix, joining Dick Clark's New Year's Rock and Eve with Ryan Seacrest remotely with a message to the American people. Watch. As you look back and reflect on 2023, what sort of, of memories, highlights stand out for you? So we brought a lot of jobs back to the United States. People are in a position to be able to make a living now. And uh, they've created a lot of jobs, over 14 million. And uh, I guess when I'm, I, I just feel good that the American people got up. What are your hopes for the new year, for both of you? Well, my hope is that everybody has a healthy, happy, and safe new year. But beyond that, I hope that they're, they understand that we're in a better position than any country in the world to lead the world. President touting the state of the U.S. despite a growing migrant crisis, rampant crime, and a struggling economy. Take a look at these numbers since Biden took office. Consumer prices have jumped more than 17 percent. Gas prices are up nearly 30 percent. Credit card debt is above 40 percent. And then real hourly wages down nearly 3 percent. And 30-year mortgages up nearly four percentage points. Uh, a recent Fox News poll finds only 14 percent of, of the country says Biden's economic policies have actually helped them. I want to bring in Florida Congresswoman Kat Kamek. She's a member of the House Energy and Commerce Committee. Congresswoman, I want to add to here that J Jim Nellis writes in, on FoxNews.com in an editorial, the Biden administration continues to tout Bidenomics, despite the fact the majority of Americans believe that they are economically worse off than they were during the Trump administration. Well, Happy New Year, and wow, yikes. Just watching that with Ryan Seacrest, it just, it, it's uncomfortable because obviously it is another example of a tone deaf White House. On so many issues, they have ignored the everyday American people. They have said that the border is secure. The border is not secure. We have historic numbers every single month breaking records of illegals from over 151 different nations coming here. You can't buy a house if you're a millennial because you're, you, you just don't have the funds to do it because inflation has wiped out your savings, your ability to purchase everyday goods and services. If you're on a fixed income, you have it even tougher, uh, not to mention the fact that we have an opioid crisis that is killing over 100,000 people every single year, a crime wave that has gripped the country. Nothing is better under Joe Biden's America. Heck, even Anderson Cooper is doing shots on live television. And I think that speaks to both CNN's ratings as well as what's going on in America today. Well, yeah, they, they certainly had a few drinks to ring in the new year. But, you know, you, you mentioned, you know, the, the, the American consumer. I mean, we're, you know, Americans now have over a trillion dollars in credit card debt. And it's not like Americans were going out in 2023 and, and spending on lavish vacations and new televisions. They were buying groceries groceries and gas and, you know, paying their rent, uh, sadly, with credit. Uh, and then you mentioned the migrant crisis. December, there was an all-time high marked for migrant encounters at the southern border. You know, CBP sources said that more than 302,000 came across in just one month. And that's not just the highest monthly total ever. It's also the first time encounters have exceeded 300,000. Since the new fiscal year began on October 1st, there's been 800,000 encounters, Congresswoman. You know, Secretary Mayorkas, Secretary Blinken went down uh, to down to Mexico last week, staying on the tequila theme. I'm sure they had some nice margaritas, but they didn't do anything when it comes to trying to figure out how to solve the border crisis, which I would argue is going to be another huge political issue that the Democrats are ignoring to their detriment. Absolutely. They ignored it. They ignore it at their political peril, but also at the risk of our own national security. It's a public health crisis. It's a national security crisis. It's a humanitarian crisis. I've been to the border myself in various sectors for uh, the last two years. You see little children that are being trafficked. You see women uh, who have been abused. You see grown military aged men with tattoos on their face, claiming asylum. I mean, the, it's clear that the entire immigration system is broken. There have to be reforms made immediately, but we need to bifurcate the issue. We have to secure the border first and foremost. There can be no negotiation on that. We should never, ever negotiate when it comes to our national security and sovereignty. And so in the next 17 days, as we march towards this first potential government shutdown, we are going to be in a locked battle with the Senate 
who doesn't want to take up H.R. 2, the strongest border security package that has ever been put forward. We have to hang tough together in the House to make sure that we deliver a border security package because every town in America today is a border town because of Joe Biden. There's real implications to that. Real, real things like health care in California is going to be free for illegals. In Maryland, they are trying to offer board seats on the school board that only illegals can vote for. When you think about the opioid crisis that's killing Americans in every community across the country, real consequences as a result of the open border. That's why we have to secure it immediately. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought up California because they're ringing, you know, in the new year, they're ringing in the fact they're going to get free health care to more than 700,000 illegals. But you mentioned, you know, look, you're right about the spending battle and the budget battle that's going to ensue when you and your colleagues come back from the holiday break. You know, that $106 billion, the Biden administration would say, well, there's money for the border uh, in there. The problem is the money that there's that they're proposing to spend is just to hire more lawyers to process migrants faster. It does nothing to actually increase uh, border security. And I'm also going to add here that the Wall Street Journal did a whole deep dive on the failures and the, and the things that, that Biden delivered on as far as his campaign promises. He basically said he was never going to build one more inch of border wall. And they did exactly that. They actually did add to the border wall in 2023 because quietly they know they've got a huge problem on their hands. Absolutely. We're one terrorist attack away from a major, major one loss of life, but breach in our national security. When you have 151 different nationalities coming across the border, um, when you have people who are on the international suspected terror watch list, and to this point, we have apprehended at least 100, or I'm sorry, 1,051 of them. Not to mention the gotaways, the people that we know have Cross the border illegally. They've been seen on camera or they have been seen by an agent and haven't been able to catch them. If you're running, it's for a reason. It's because you're either a gang member, you're on the international terror watch list, you're a drug runner. There is a crime in your past that prohibits you from being able to come in. So there, there's something that has to be done immediately. When you think about the DHS report that's going to be coming out here in the next few months about the 85,000 plus children that have been lost, that have been crossed, that illegally crossed through the border and then subsequently turned over to uh, HHS, Health and Human Services. They have lost track of these children. And when questioned, Secretary Becerra has no answers. There's going to be bombshell reports that Americans are going to look up and say, what the heck is the Biden administration doing? This is not a humane policy. This is not asylum. This is actually an attempt to, I think, invade the border to try to sway elections, to try to do things illegally. There's no good reason why you would want this many people coming in. And I mean, you think at this point, there's more people who have come in illegally under Joe Biden than 23 states total population combined. That's mm -hmm. staggering. Yeah. And there are real world consequences in every single one of our towns. We have to use the next 17 days as the ultimate leverage to ensure that we get a border security package. And Congresswoman Kat Kamek, it's always good to have you on the program. Happy New Year. Thank you for joining us. Happy New Year. Thank you.